Moving on. Thank you very much. Um, that was a long time coming. Uh, next, we have a report to the board on dyslexia, and this was prompted um, really for two reasons. One was, as um, Chief Academic Officer Luis Valentino can uh, refer to, there was a state mandate for training and professional development on dyslexia. And then also, um, we wanted to hear about the district's activities because it's critical to our board goals around um, improved student literacy. So welcome, Dr. Valentino. Thank Thank you. Uh, good evening, Superintendent Guerrero, uh, Chair Constam, uh, Directors. Um, the team is here this evening to provide update on our efforts to address dyslexia in a comprehensive and sustainable way. And so you've already heard from some of the team members who we would definitely like to thank that as members of the advisory have provided not only great insight, but have challenged us to think more broadly, more openly, and more comprehensively about what we're trying to do in addressing dyslexia and the precursors to dyslexia. And so on the team who will be presenting to you this evening, the second phase of this will be Dr. Tanya McKee, who is one of the newest senior directors um, in the uh, Department of Humanities here at Portland Public School, and Elizabeth Martin, also new to the team, uh, who has been working with the advisory group to prepare for this evening, but also to develop the plan of action that will take us not only through, through this year, but also beyond um, in terms of addressing the support and guidance that our schools and our classrooms will need the resources and supports that, that they will need, and being able to articulate what our accountabilities are going to be to ensure that all of our students receive the supports, the supports that they need. So I'd like to invite Dr. McKee and Elizabeth Martin. Thank you. I guess I'm gonna say good night. It's, uh, <laughs> And good evening, we can go with good evening. Um, I'm kind of a early to bed, um, early to rise with a three-year-old at home, but um, here we are. Um, director, superintendent, thank you. Um, like uh, Dr. Valentino said, really to give a shout out to um, the parents and the community for being here until now and supporting us through this work, um, the work that they've done before today and in supporting Elizabeth Martin in her position. It's important, and I just wanted to reiterate a few things as we go into this presentation in terms of an update for the board with new board members, that this was co-constructed with, with the community, with the um, Dyslexia Parent Advocacy Group, and it's really important as we move forward that we're working alongside our parents and our community, um, not just um, with dyslexia, but really reiterating what uh, Angela said earlier about reading being a civil right, and that all kids you know, deserve a world-class education, and we will continue to work with our community and work with experts in the field to ensure that we are closing that gap with reading. So again, I want to say thank you because here we sit at this time, and they're here with us, and it's really important. And as this presentation was put together, uh, Elizabeth Martin, being the um, program administrator for dyslexia, has worked closely with um, the parent group and really working to ensure that we have everybody understanding what dyslexia is and how we continue to support this within our, within our district. So with right. that. Okay. Oh, you were going to do the event. <laughs> okay, so really where we're going to, it's just a quick overview of literacy and, and dyslexia, just to make sure again that some of this was done previous uh, last year, was my understanding, and um, looking at Senate Bill um, 1003, as then we'll get into the dyslexia priority plan again that was constructed with um, the parent advocacy group. And then also, we'll make mention to this um, as we're going through, but there was several um, handouts that should have been included in your board packet that we'll reference as we move forward. Okay. All right, 
Thank you. Um, thank you, Superintendent Guerrero. Thank you, directors. Um, I have put this dyslexia priority plan in front of a lot of eyes, and so it is really great to be here to put it in front of yours. As Tanya mentioned, um, this was co-constructed, and um, I worked with our parent advocacy group as well as people all across PPS. And one of the first things we want to talk about is just giving you a little bit of background. Background about comprehensive literacy, um, best instruction around teaching kids to read, which um, some of our comment tonight spoke to, so it might feel a little repetitive. Um, and then going into dyslexia um, shortly after. So. First off, comprehensive literacy, we're really looking at that same research that came out almost 20 years ago and has not changed, that all kids to learn to read need these five pillars. You might hear them as the big five, you might hear them as the five essentials. It's phonological awareness or phonemic awareness, which is that ability to hear and manipulate the sound structure of our language. It is phonics, that is that letter sound correspondence. It is fluency, the ability to read at grade level, at a regular rate, um, with voice and intonation. Vocabulary, understanding the meaning of words and how to apply those words across all content areas. And comprehension. This research hasn't changed. We know this is what kids need. So um, in PPS, we have a comprehensive literacy system that does need to have some supplementing. We know that, we absolutely know that. And that's specific to the foundational skills. And when I talk about foundational skills tonight, you're gonna to see it in the priority plan. And that is really looking at all those pieces plus print concepts. Okay, that's the ability to understand the order of print, how to move from line to line. Um, we are gonna talk about spelling, grammar, and those, those foundational pieces come straight from our Oregon State standards, the foundational language uh, standards, and that's what we want to ensure um, that all kids get explicitly taught. And when kids need intervention, it gets explicitly taught just in a more um, intensive way. So this is our call to ac action. Um, you heard a little bit again tonight during the testimony that um, we have a literacy crisis. It is not just here in Portland, it's not just here in Oregon, it is across our nation. Um, this slide was made available at the International Dyslexia Association Conference uh, by a researcher out of UC San Francisco, Fumiko Hoft. Um, I have to give her credit because she said, yeah, use it in your presentation. Um, so here it is. This is, this is. this is pretty big. This is why we're here. Um, this is why we need to ensure that we support our students better and we support our teachers in understanding how to teach to our students better. Um, one thing I wanna know is when readers don't reach that third grade milestone, as I know you're aware, just looking at your board goals, um, it becomes more and more difficult to provide that intervention. And part of that is because our teachers up the grades don't necessarily have the time in their schedule, nor all the background around how to intensify and support students. That becomes then pervasive. And then it is harder for all kids who are struggling to access content across the board. High school science, high school math, all those pieces are impacted when kids are reading significantly below grade level. We're gonna talk about how we address that in our priority plan. But real quick, as we move into that priority plan, I do wanna talk a little bit about why we're here, which is around dyslexia. So in your handouts, you do have a definition of dyslexia from the International Dyslexia Association. Um, and I just wanna call it a couple of the, the big pieces from that um, definition is that dyslexia is neurobiological in origin, meaning that it can be heritable and it surfaces in the phonological processor of the brain. Um, it is characterized by difficulties with accurate and fluent word recognition, as well as poor spelling and decoding. Um, but that is unexpected when you look at the cognitive abilities of students who have dyslexia. It's also unexpected when kids have had strong instruction 
So that's really something that we need to focus on here. Um, we need to support all kids in a preventative way to prevent this, but also support our students that may just need a little bit more intensification. The other handout that you have um, is an FAQ uh, that we give to parents. It goes at conference time to parents of kindergarten students in PPS as well as new to first grade and then it's available um, in our schools and that has additional questions in case you have um, more questions about dyslexia. So the other piece to um, share with you tonight um, is the Senate bill. Senate bill 1003 is the dyslexia legislation. Um, we have a picture here of our governor signing that into um, law and it impacts PPS in three ways. Number one, we have to have a trained advisor in every PPS building that has a kindergarten or a first grade. That training is um, very explicit around foundational reading, understanding and recognizing dyslexia, as well as intensification for instruction. The second part of the Senate bill is to ensure that we screen all kindergarten and all new to first grade students. Um, the state gives us a list of screeners that are approved. Dibbles is one of them. So that is our screener, Dibbles and Edel, which is the Spanish version of Dibbles for our 9010 programs. The second area is notification. Um, when a child shows risk in fall and winter, on Dibbles or Edel, uh, we screen families and we notify them. And that is a family history checklist that gets sent home to those families. Oh, I wanna point out that this is not testing for dyslexia. This is screening for potential reading difficulties. So that is a big, big difference. Okay. 